Hey, Nick Clayton here, bridging the gap at Gravity and Oxygen Fitness in Boca Raton, Florida. Today's special guest, one and only Nick Tuminello. How's it going? It's a good day, huh? It's hot down here. Always, man. Any day in sandals is a good day. I like it. So we're going to talk about an article in the Journal of Strength Conditioning and Research. It talks about the difference in carrying position in split squat lunges and walking lunges. Nick, what's your take on that? So yeah, it was interesting because, so we have split squats, we have walk-in lunges. We're gonna focus on walk-in lunges. I tend to call them traveling lunges, small tip. When you tell people to walk, they tend to wanna to like do this weird step. So when I say traveling, they don't have the association with walking. I know it sounds like it's a minor thing, but it, I've found it does make a difference. So we're gonna focus on is maximizing glute recruitment in the walking lunge specifically. So what the study looked at is if you're gonna hold a load on one side, and let's use a split squat for, uh, for example for right now. If you're gonna hold a load on one side, they compared quad and glute activity. If you hold the load on the same side, so right now my right leg is my main working leg. So what happens when I do the split squat when I'm holding the load in this side, the side I'm making a fist with, or I hold the load in this side? And what they found was in the split squat, it was pretty similar, because there's not really any centric component between the quad and glutes. However, when they did a walking lunge, there was an increased glute medius recruitment during the eccentric phase, when you held the dumbbell or the weight load, in this case we're gonna use a kettlebell, in the opposite side. And now that should make sense if you understand anatomy because of what the glute medius is doing here. That all set load wants to pull me that way and the glute medius can help keep me level. All right, now there are some interesting tweaks when you're only holding a load on one side or what we're gonna talk about, an offset load. Uh, and we'll show you that as we get into the demos. And other research has shown, if we're talking about maximizing glute recruitment, that if we actually lean the torso forward, we can get a little bit more glute recruitment, which makes sense based on the difference between a deadlift and a squat. More forward torso, longer lever, makes these work a little bit harder. So we're gonna talk about, or we're gonna demonstrate a walking lunge or a traveling lunge version with a single side load. And then we're gonna talk about one of the issues that comes up with that, having to do with grip, and then how we can get around that problem as well. Cool. Let's take a look and see what that uh, feels like. All right, so let's talk about just using a unilateral load. So held, holding a load on one side of the body. Now we're actually gonna use, when we get into the offset load that involves two kettlebells, we intentionally use kettlebell different loads so you can see the different colors. So we have a lighter kettlebell that's blue. We'll talk about that in a bit. So let's say we're only gonna use one load at a time. If the weight is in Nick's left hand, he's gonna step forward with his right leg to do a traveling lunge. So go ahead and step out for me like you're gonna do a traveling lunge. All right, looking good there. Now, he's gonna step back, or you know, return with his other leg. Now see what he just did there? He alternated his leg, but now we're on the same side. So we're not getting the same amount of glute medius recruitment based on the research reference that we talked about. So let's back you up. So what I want him to do, the difference when we're using offset load, again, the context here is trying to maximize glute recruitment in the lunge is he's gonna do it almost like he has a limp. So here's my weight, here's my working leg. Instead of stepping forward with the same leg, I'm gonna step forward, or sorry, with the opposite leg, I'm gonna step forward with the same leg again. So it's gonna look like this. And that way we always create that contralateral load or that cross body, weight on this side, working leg on the opposite side. All right, let's give that a shot. Good. And let's just do one more rep. Perfect. Good, Nick, just take a break for a second. So there's a side benefit to that. Anytime you hold a load on one side of the body and not the other, or a heavier load on one side of the body and not the other, which we're getting ready to, to, to discuss, what has to turn on a little bit more that we haven't talked about? Obviously these torso muscles, right? If I'm holding a weight here, in order to stay upright, I have to prevent this from happening. So it's almost like a side plank. Side plank on this elbow, gravity would be doing that to me. I have to use these muscles to stay level. It's the same thing. So it kind of covers two birds with one stone. Yeah, it feels right. great on the, it feels just like a suitcase carry with the e lunge. Exactly right, exactly right. So now, let's bring in, talk about bringing in a second weight. In this case, we're using kettlebell. So just kind of stand there for a second. So see, we have a larger kettlebell and a lighter kettlebell. The weights, let's not get too caught up in the weights just yet. So here's an issue, you can put them down for just one second so you can, I don't want you to hurt yourself, Nick. <laughs> so here's one of the issues. If you're pretty strong at lunges, well, we're not gonna put, let's say you can do 80 pounds for sets of eight. Well, now you're gonna hold 80 pounds on one side versus 40 and 40. The first thing that's gonna fatigue out before your legs is grip. Sure, you could use wraps, but that becomes a pain. So what we've 
come up with in order to create an overall load on the body but still hold true to this offset load is we just use two unevenly loaded weights. Now the question is what side do you hold the heavier weight on? Well, it goes back to the research reference. So if I'm going to be stepping forward with the right leg, the heavier weight is on the left side. What's the percentage? If you're going to use 100 pounds of total weight, we normally like to stay within like a 70, 30. That's not an exact thing, but we tend to find that works pretty, pretty well. So it would be 70 pounds in this hand, 30 in the other. You could go 65, 35, somewhere around there. All right? So let's try that, Nick. So now we have more overall load on Nick than the previous set, but we're going to do the same type of lunge, so he's still going to step forward always with the right leg. Let's hit it. Good, and just one more is fine. Good work. So now, if he's going to do the other side, go ahead. What I would have done there, actually a little trick, check this out. So face that way again, Nick. Mm -hmm. Put him down just like that. Now flip around. There right, you go. Style, Nick there you go. Now you're st stepping with the opposite leg. All left. Good. And then you can just, once you're finished, you can just park him right there. Now, so we talked one last tweak. So we talked about getting more glute medius out of that and a little bit more of the anti-lateral flexors, if we can just say that, by staying upright. But if we want to bring in even more glutes out of this and actually make it a bit more knee friendly. And what I mean by that, I'm not saying that upright torso lunges are bad on the knees, but it creates a longer lever here and there's going to be more quad dominance. Sometimes it hurts people or you want to not get as much quad. Leaning more forward shifts some of that weight forward, which means a longer lever back here at my hip. So, as I said, other research has demonstrated that a forward torso lean brings in more of the glutes, more of the glute max, and also a little hamstring. So now we're going to combine all of this together with a slight forward lean as you do it. Gotcha. All right? So let's pick it up again. Now let me just cue you on one thing real quick. Try to do it all in one shot. Step forward and just lean forward. So now instead of the weights being the suitcase, like you said, they're going to be more here about your arms are going to be kind of parallel with your shin, which is fairly vertical. Notice I'm not rolling forward, I'm hinging forward. Coming up, so it's just that subtle lean. The more he leans forward, the more glute recruitment he's going to get, but the less quad recruitment he's going to get. So that's going to be up to the individual. Let's try it. Really nice. And one more. And then just park them right where they are, and then you turn around. Perfect. And you'll find when people first start doing this, it's a little robotic to them because they kind of want to step and then do the torso thing. And then eventually they'll get better at putting it together and it looks a little bit more rhythmic. Yeah. All right. Let's see how it looks coming back. Good. See, already he's looking a little bit better with it. So before we wrap this up, I want to cue Nick on one thing. And a lot of people do this. You notice when he was doing his lunge, his arms were back here. He was intensely using his lats because he was, he was thinking, i got to keep them back here. Let the weight go here because if the weight's in front of you, now you have to use these more. Okay, more glutes. So let's try it again and let the hands track parallel with the shins, not behind your foot. See how she looks. That's where we want it. Ooh, definitely feel the glutes more. Yeah. Exactly. Great tip. So let's hit you coming back. We can't have you walking out of here doing circles. You're going to have one side stronger than the other. It's a joke I use all the time. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, see, so he's starting to put it together. Good work, my friend. Now, if you're worried about hip flexor stretch, well, you're not upright, so you're not stretching the hip flexors. Well, we're not talking about flexibility right now. We're talking about strength training. And we're talking about strength training that emphasizes certain muscle groups. If you want hip flexor flexibility, there's hip flexor stretches for that. So it's not a one or the other thing. They can all go together. Last tip is if you have somebody who has knee issues with lunges and they have some knee pain doing lunges with an upright torso, normally the first thing that they do is lean their torso forward to try to transfer force out of that bad knee into the hip. Sometimes if you try that forward torso lean, the, the offset load, can, you can have that or not have it, depends. Sometimes that will take some of their knee pain away and allow them to do lunges. Now, I know that's not a medical diagnosis. It's just something you can, you can experiment with to help work around a knee limitation. So that's a side benefit to not just maximizing glute recruitment, 
but empower someone who doesn't think they were able to do lunges because of some sort of knee, knee limitation. Nice. You heard it from the master. Lots of great tips. Appreciate Thanks it, man. Hello, Gravity and Oxygen Fitness. Hope you guys enjoyed it. For more information, check out the article. That's it for now.